So for this song analysis, I have the novel The Music of Chance, and it's written by Paul Auster and published in 1990. And for the analysis part, I'm going to focus on uh, symbolism and themes uh, present in the novel. And the themes I'm going to look at are identity, destiny slash chance, and then power, but power meaning both the power over other people, but also as a way of having or not having control over your own life. Now all these uh, themes, uh, they uh, cohere, and therefore I'm not going to look at them completely separately, but also uh, see how they interact with each other. And then I'm going to put the novel into a uh, literary context of postmodernism, and then I'm going to have a conclusion. So for the first th uh, theme of identity, I'm going to take uh, the part from the movie that we know about uh, the main character, Jim Nash, that he, uh, after inheriting a large sum of money, he uh, leaves everything behind, buys a new car, and then he just drives around the country. Now this continuous driving can be seen as a way of searching for something, but also, since he hasn't really found anything yet, also this sense of being lost. And therefore, this uh, continuous driving can be seen of him sort of searching for something. And this, um, the way that he is driving can be seen as a uh, sign of freedom because he doesn't really have any responsibilities. But also, since he is sort of trapped in this um, state where he cannot really find himself, it can also be seen that he is, uh, yeah, he's trapped in this position. There is this freedom and um, uh, unfreedom in this uh, sense. Now, to uh, look at how he, this can be seen, I've chosen a quote on uh, page ninety-six, and it is um, describing the uh, the city of the world model, and it says. In one corner of the exercise yard, the inmates were talking in small groups, playing basketball, reading books, but then with a kind of horror, he saw a blindfolded prisoner standing against the wall just behind them, about to be executed by a firing squad. What did this mean? Now you can see sort of how he might be able to identify with this man being trapped behind a wall and being sort of punished for no uh, good reason because he is sort of um, separated from society. Whether this is um, on purpose or not, can uh, can we we cannot really tell. Also, in the theme of identity, I've chosen to look at some of the uh, doubleness present in this novel. And um, you have this doubleness uh, already present by be the main characters being sorted into pairs. You have on the one hand you have Jim Nash and Jack Potsy. And on the other, you have Bill Flower and Willie Stone. Now, if you look at the uh, latter couple, Bill Flower and Willie Stone, you can see that they uh, represent two sides of one person. You can see this by um, Bill and Willie both derive from the original name of William, and therefore by having the same uh, first name but different surnames, you can see that they sort of represent different uh, sides of it. Now, you have this opposite of Flower being sort of gentle and soft, and you have stone being rough. But this is not, um, so uh, the simplicity in this is not really present because you also have a more complex uh, aspect to it. Because the uh, the individual characters also have sort of a double side, and you can see this in a quote on page 87. And it is um, describing Bill Flower, and it goes, there was no question that he was gracious, but even his joviality seemed forced, suggesting that if he did not bombard them with all that pedantic, overly articulate talk, the mask of fellowship might somehow slip from his face. So you have this um, mask symbolizing uh, different identities because you have this original identity, but then you can put on superficial identities, uh, so there's a mask, and you don't really have only one mask, you can have several masks, so you can put on several identities. And the same goes for uh, Stone. It says, Sweet little Stone, for example, whose manner was so humble and benign, turned out to spend his days constructing a model of some bizarre totalitarian world. Also on page 87. You have this sweet little Stone. You you have this uh, sort of opposite, but then you think he is sweet, but then again he is not so sweet. So you have this complexity of um, doubleness of characters. 
Now for the um, destiny and chance part, I want to uh, firstly take a look at the title, Music of Chance. And this also is um, has this ambiguous meaning to it because chance uh, is a word that has sort of several meanings. It can uh, relate to uh, the destiny and um, sort of uh, future events that are predetermined, but also it can be seen as you can take a chance, so you can take a risk. So you have this um, two sides of the uh, word of chance. And this can be seen in uh, the uh, poker game that isn't present in the excerpts here, but uh, you have this poker game where, um, first of all, it is a risk for uh, Tim Nash to uh, risk all his money. Um, and then uh, Jack Potsy and Jim Nash, after losing their money and their freedom, they are talking about whether things are predetermined or not. And therefore, I want to take a look at uh, page 139, and it is in the top of the page. And it's uh, Jim Nash saying, I'm not talking about God. God has nothing to do with it. It's just another word for the same thing. You want to believe in some hidden purpose. You're trying to persuade yourself there's a reason for what happens in the world. I don't care what you call it. Good God or luck or harmony. It all comes down to the same uh, bullshit. It's a way of avoiding the facts. Of refusing to look at how things really work. So this is Jim Nash's view on uh, w whether there is a, uh, a predetermination of things or not. And um, so he's saying that there isn't any, um, any, any chance or any destiny. You have to uh, create these things for yourself. So there is this, um, this way of uh, whether you're having freedom or you're not having freedom. Because when things are determined um, for your life, you don't really have any say in what's going to happen. So therefore you can't really um, dis, uh, you can't really take charge of your own life. But on the other hand, uh, when you uh, you have this um, this power over your life, you can uh, choose how you want to uh, create it. There is this uh, you can say that you have freedom, but then again, uh, this also comes with a great responsibility and therefore um, can be seen as a way of uh, weighing you down. Um, so yeah, um, also relating to destiny, you can uh, see this uh, power as a um, sort of having or not having power over your own life. And um, for this I have chosen a quote on the uh, page 216. And it, uh, it's Nash driving in the car, and it goes, Nash had the car up to 60 by then, feeling in absolute control as he whipped along the narrow, twisting country road. And uh, further down this uh, page, it goes, There was no time to stop, no time to prevent what was going to happen, and so instead of slamming his foot on the brakes, he pressed down even harder on the gas. So... In the first uh, part, he has, he, uh, he has this feeling of being in control. You can see that he's used to, uh, he's used to driving, and therefore he, um, he feels this, uh, this freedom, and therefore he's uh, this taking charge of his life, because this is just uh, afterwards um, him being uh, free from the, uh, from the restraints of a bill uh, flower and stone. But then when he uh, sort of... Uh, is panicking and cannot really have control um, over the car. He uh, it says there that instead of slamming his foot in the brakes, he pressed down even harder on the gas. So this is him uh, realizing that he cannot really take control, and then he's just giving into it. And this is uh, sort of him um, giving into uh, not really having control over his life. So therefore, uh, he just gives it up to chance. Alright, so um, this novel can be seen as a postmodernistic novel because it has this uh, search for identity and ha has this search for meaning. So you have this uh, insinuating that Nash eventually dies in the novel. It can be seen that um, there is this lack of meaning in your life. And um, yeah.
so uh, that was it.